so now let's have a bit of fun and abstract this thing a bit. So, so what is this structure we have defined before? From the way I wrote O of our differential equation of some open set V to be like this space of holomorphic functions on this neighborhood that solve our equation, you, you can see that. Uh, firstly, you can, of course, define this for every open set V, at least for every subset of the region where our differential equation is even defined. And the way I, I wrote this, th like this should ring familiar, because recall that in, in complex analysis, at least when you're doing Riemann surfaces or stuff like that, you always write O of V for the sheaf of of holomorphic functions on a neighborhood, and I, I sort of adapted that notation. So what this really is, is a sheaf of local solutions. It's really just sort of a, a set of subsets of the sheaf of local holomorphic functions. Uh, yeah, well, why is it a sheaf? Well, you can restrict solutions. It doesn't change the question whether they solve stuff. And when you have a bunch of solutions that agree on overlaps, you can bundle, you can sort of stitch them together to get a solution on the bigger set. So uh, that's not a problem. And yeah, it's a subsheaf of vector spaces of our sheaf of holomorphic functions on V. And it has a specific property um, because you can sort of extend solutions uniquely. That means that our singularities are outside of this set here. If we have a solution on this set here, then we can restrict it and we can extend it, and that doesn't change our space of solutions. So sort of once you've zoomed in a bit, uh, your sheaf becomes constant. That's the point. Our sheaf of local solutions is locally constant. Uh, which means that around every Z0 in U, there is a neighborhood V, so that when we restrict our sheaf to subsets of V, is a constant sheaf. So, yeah, locally constant. And one general feature in locally constant sheaves is that given a path, you can transport a vector around that path because my sheaf is locally constant. So in particular, the stalks are all n-dimensional vector spaces, uh, exactly the vector space that might sort of capture the values or the initial conditions or ho however you want to call it, and you can transport it along a path. Because um, if we say sort of those are open sets on which our sheaf of solutions is a constant sheaf, Okay, wonderful drawing. Uh, you can first uniquely extend onto this set, then you can uniquely extend onto this set, onto this set, this set, and so on. And because you're moving on a, along a path, you don't really have to deal with, like, uh, after going along this loop, you come back to the same point, but you might end up at a different point. But that's not a problem because we're going along a path. And then you end up here and you might have a different value. Point being, every path induces an isomorphism between the stalks of the two endpoints. And in fact, the 
isomorphism only depends on homotopy classes and blah 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 you, you get like a functor from the fundamental groupoid of u to yeah the category of finite dimensional vector spaces and if that seems somehow familiar which uh, i'm not sure if it should be but if you remember uh, if if at some point you took differential geometry or something um this is exactly the notion of parallel transport and when you're doing parallel transport with a, a connection that has curvature zero so if you're doing parallel transport with a flat connection you get exactly this behavior that you get a representation of the fundamental groupoid and this exactly like in the differential geometry case is called the monotremy representation.